everybody, my name is Professor Tool and I take berries from Berry Science Lab. Today we will be looking at black holes. By the way, I'm uh, kind of concerned. I think that black hole over there is about to suck up the rest of the title. But hey, who cares? I only made this title in one minute, so it's not really valuable anyway. Anyway, now let us salute Einstein for laying the foundation on modern physics with his four groundbreaking papers. Now let me try and break the ground physically. Okay, attempt failed. All right, uh, Einstein, can you go back to German? No, no, not no, no, Germany. Uh, uh, please don't go back to Germany. Uh, uh, go back to New Jersey, uh, Princeton. We don't talk about what happened to Germany. All right, black holes. Such an interesting concept. You know black hole? Sucked everything up. Sorry, folks. Uh, the black hole is kind of malicious. But anyway, um, let me just bring the toolbar over there. And so today we will be looking at, well, we'll be looking at black holes, I think you can read. So, let's say you have not a black hole right now. Well, a black hole. Let's just discuss about a black hole. Black hole, you can't escape. Now, not to give you an existential crisis. To make you feel better, the nearest one is about 25 million light years away. So, yeah. Anyway, you know, light years are pretty long. That's how much light travels in one year. You know light is fast, right? The fastest thing in the universe. All right. So let's just start with the black hole. The black hole is impossible to escape from because its escape velocity is higher than the speed of light, which, well, you can't violate the laws of physics by doing that. That would break the laws of physics. Ha! So, well, black holes are impossible to escape from. So, uh, God help you if you get caught in one's gravitational field. Which, by the way, is a met. Not like constituting a light year. Then it would be like OP. But, like, it's immense. Its gravitational pull is so hard. Why do you think it's impossible to escape? Now, there is a tiny part where it's possible to escape called the ergosphere, which surrounds it. Where time is only, well, half broken. So, like, take the clock you have on that wall and then cut it in half and then throw the other half in the trash, and there, you've got time and the, well, the other world. And the ergosphere is like that. Time is only like half broken in there. And there's still a tiny way to get out, although you may feel a bit dizzy if you go in there and come out. But once you cross the ergosphere, you reach the, well, <coughs> enter, what was it called? The horizon. Yeah, the horizon. Is event horizon. A, the event horizon is where events start happening. Uh, well, according to the name at least. Because at the event horizon, which is like the surface of the black hole, that is when it's impossible to escape. That, well, the ergosphere is sufficiently hard to uh, escape, but it can be done by rocket technology that is of our age. But the event horizon, not even light can escape that, man. Not even light. So yeah, the event horizon is where all the events from, the, uh, from your life start flashing onto the horizon. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah, you don't want to end up in the event horizon. That you want to be sucked up. All right. No, okay, okay. We don't talk about that here with Gary Science Lab. I was about to say something about toilets because they suck their... Okay, 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 okay. We don't talk about that on Gary Science Lab. So let's just say this blue ball right here is Earth because I'm too lazy to draw the land on it. It's ocean all the way. And now, let's say you go an infinite distance, which is physically impossible, but, well, let's just say, you go an 
infinite distance away. Right over here. Which is technically only about three or four Earths away. But hey, we're pretending it's infinity, okay? Alright. When you go to infinity, velocity is zero. Potential energy is zero. As well, R is too big to comprehend. Speaking of R, where does R come to the equation MGH? Well, the thing is, there's a new equation to be derived. Because MGH only works around art and the uh, tiny bit of space around it. Doesn't work when, well, you're way outside art and out of space. Alright. So, what is this uh, new formula we have to derive? Well, it's a bit complicated. It's complicated. So, if you want to move on, beware, there's some math coming. So first, let's use the one, the only, force. So the force equation is Z M1 M2 over R squared, something that even Newton knew. And I'm not going to cover the derivation of that in this video, otherwise we will never be done. Alright. So, g of 1 m2 over r squared, now let's say that's equal to du over dr. Since I'm lazy, I'll write r, uh, lower kick. Please don't get angry at me in the comments for doing that. Alright, so, now what we are going to do is, we are going to, okay, I'm just going to take off my Indian accent. What we're going to do is basically... We're just going to bring dr to the other side. That's it. So, that just involves d, m1, m2, dr over r squared equals du. Now, if we take the integral of both sides, we get u. <coughs> so, du is just equal to u. And by, when I say you, I mean you guys out there. Normies, except the aliens. Your guys are cool. Just kidding. All of my viewers are cool. So, <clears throat> this thing is u equals to, well, g is a constant, m1 is a constant, m2 is a constant, dr and r squared is a constant. Just kidding! They aren't constant. For example, my radius to the, uh, to the earth isn't constant. If I do this. Ah! See? It changed. So, um, let me try that again. Ah! <laughs> Can see the cameraman hiding his mouth? Ah, damn. Oh, I so, sorry folks. So we take all the constants out of the integral, leaving only the non-normies to remain, which are the aliens. So, when you take the integral of that, well, that's 1 over r squared, r minus 2. What was the power rule again? I have to use the reverse of the power rule, d over dx was equal to nx and minus 1. So the reverse power rule would be, well, what kind of integral is that? Broken? So, it's fact. It ain't too many McDonald's burgers. Wait, 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 wait. Get this. Uh, uh, my neighbor's neighbor actually collapsed into a black hole. Uh, good thing we didn't get sw swallowed. You want to know how? He ate way too many Mac chicken burgers. Sorry. Um... All right, so uh, the integral of x is going to be x n plus 1 over n plus 1. So that's just going to be x n minus, uh, minus 1, which is over minus 1, which is minus 1 over x, which is minus 1 over x, which is minus 1 over x, till we get back here, which gives us g m 1 m 2. And let's just abbreviate using 
these guys for now. And it's minus because of the mass. See? So what we're going to do today, actually, is we're going to divide the escape velocity of the Earth to just get a feel for it. Before we move on to the bigger things. Yeah. Okay. So, this is minus GMM over R. Hooray! We have derived the potential energy equation. If you've derived this by yourself, I see a lot of potential energy in you. All right, so, now the thing is, with potential energy, potential energy and velocity are looking similar. So, the thing is, kinetic energy is also zero, because pay attention, pay attention. So, um, well, by that I mean you can read, you can read, and you know the equation of kinetic energy, you know the equation of kinetic energy. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to half mv squared and I am going to minus gmm over r. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mm and I'm going to mm and I'm going to mm until we get half of v squared equals to minus gm over r. See, we always mm like that. Sorry, couldn't help the need to fall down. So that just gives us v squared equals minus 2gm over r. We don't really care about the minus, so let's just remove it. Because minus only indicates direction, because remember, remember, velocity is a mosquito. Oh, sorry, by that I meant velocity is a vector. It's a vector of malaria! You're a disease to the scientific community if you believe that. Alright, so v squared equals 2gm over r. I think I need a calc for this one. Luckily, we've got the trusty TI Inspire CS. Cassia, what the frick is with your name for these guys? Alright, let's turn you on. Oh, on. I'm dumb. Alright, so if you don't know, this is a more advanced calculator, even has a cursor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the map section, just like so. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our values. Just move the cursor around so you don't turn off. So 2, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times 5.997. Uh, times 10 to the 24th, storing 6.4 times 10 to the 6th. Right, so let's just put that in our calculator. So first, let's just multiply all the numbers. So that's just going to be 2 times, uh, take 2, no, no, not 2.08, 12.485, Multiply that by 10 minus 11 plus 24 plus uh, minus 6 is going to be 10 to the second root. That's where the square root is. Had trouble finding it on other calculators. Where's the answer going to know? That's always where it is, Casio. Okay, let's just divide that by 6 again to see its true value. So that's 11,173 meters per second needed to escape the Earth's gravitational field. I'm about to leave the Earth and I'm having no my velocity now. This might be my last video. Uh, hopefully I can breathe on the moon, but maybe that might not be plausible. Maybe they have moon stations there, I don't know. Anyway, see, this might be my last video. Bye.